So there's been a lot of talk about these next-gen consoles. Well, for the record, it's tough to even get your hands on these consoles at the moment. I have them over here, but I got this like way bigger box that you probably noticed. I mean, I think this is like bomb proof or something. This is a, a very substantial box. Inside of here is a PC dubbed the console killer. That's what's inside here, courtesy of Gigabyte. I'm gonna stack it up against these consoles and actually showcase the difference if you do choose to go the PC route and uh, maybe gain some bragging rights against your console brothers. Ooh. All right, there's no console that's gonna give you this. Can they see this? Look at that. You can see the chassis, how small it is. I mean, it's, it might even be smaller in some dimensions than the, the PS5. Plus, are, I mean, arguably even cooler to look at. It's got a 3070 installing. Of course, it's also got 10th Gen Core i9 CPU in it. Look how tiny this thing is. I I mean, if you were to imagine an RTX 3070 build, you probably wouldn't picture this. You'd think of a much larger tower. Believe it or not, the components exist to build out a, a really beefy system inside of a portable package. And actually, I should just do the comparison right now next to a PS5, which many have suggested is uh, large for a console, but as you can see, if I place them at the same orientation, these things scale-wise, well, the PlayStation is taller. This is obviously a little bit fatter. There's just a lot more flexibility and potential with a gaming PC, obviously. If we just look at the back of this thing, I mean, it's a full-fledged PC. We have plenty of USB ports. We have multiple video outputs. You could use this for both work and play. Since they're calling it a console killer, you could even place it in a home entertainment setup and then sit back with uh, a Microsoft controller. Now the other cool thing about going to PC route, you can customize it however you see fit. So this one has an Intel Core i9-10900K. It has an Aorus Ultra Mini ITX motherboard. That's how you can shrink the whole thing down so significantly. 16 gigs of 3600 megahertz RGB RAM. Yeah, that means it's gonna glow. It's got a 750 watt PSU as well as an Aorus liquid cooler. And Gigabyte even makes the NVMe storage that's inside of here, super fast storage. Oh, I almost missed the versatility on the top as well. So you have a headphone jack here as well as a Type-C connector and a USB-A port as well. All right, let's boot it up. So you can see the RGB RAM lights up. This is all configurable. The fans on the front light up as well. Oh, the CPU has a screen. The, C the cooler has a screen on it. Very cool. So, okay, so the core of this is gonna be your graphics card, obviously. This is the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Windforce 3X cooling system. So you can see the fan situation on there. Extended heatsink design allows airflow to pass through, providing better heat dissipation. So you have the GPU in there, but there's gonna be some other peripherals that we need. So here is a mechanical keyboard from Gigabyte, the Aorus K1 featuring Cherry MX gaming switches, RGB as well, so you can match it up to the RGB interior. Full range anti-ghosting. Utilizing the revolutionary anti-ghosting matrix key switch design, Aorus K1 provides anti-ghosting across all areas of the keyboard. It's also got a built-in cable management system. Oh yeah, I see what they mean about the cable management. Either direction. Look at that. Check out the cable management. And then, wow. That's not something I ever imagined thinking about. Cable management right on the keyboard itself. Maybe I want to go left with it. Maybe that's a cleaner look for me. I can still go out the center if I choose to be boring. I can go out the right side or the left side. Something to think about. Man, there is no quick brown fox like the mechanical quick brown fox. The mouse is more of the same. It's the Aorus M5 gaming mouse, 400 IPS tracking speed. It has weight adjustment built in, 
Of course, the RGB is in there as well. 16,000 DPI sensor. Omron, 50 million clicks. Those are incredible, those specifications. 50 million. Who's gonna reach it? So here's the mouse. It's got a kind of rubberized texture in the thumb and finger areas on the side. Scroll wheel. And it has these extra weights, and I'm not sure where they install. Is it on the front edge? Ooh, look at that. 2.5 grams each. Ooh, tricky. Wait a minute. There we go. Look at that. Little puzzle in there. Let's get some weight. Now, you know, if I was a proper, if I was a pro gamer, I would never put these in here, obviously, because I need that lightweight mouse, right? Super sensitivity. And plus, I'm doing these extended sessions. I'm wearing out, I'm getting the carpal tunnel, as Kirk would say. Sometimes, for different types of work, I, I prefer a little weight to the mouse. Maybe some of that subtle mouse movement inside of a Photoshop or something along those lines. Then I might want a little weight to it. Well, that's why you have the option built right in. And look at this, they go in like a little puzzle and we can put up to five of these 2.5 gram weights. And that's gonna feel like a totally different mouse at this point. And they're easy to put in and take out. And it's absolutely a much different mouse. If I was doing the competitive stuff, I will keep it lightweight. But for the creative work, I'm gonna go with a little weight on there. Last item in this build is of course a gaming monitor. So we have the M. 27Q, so as the name implies, obviously this is a 27 inch gaming monitor. We're talking about console killers here. Uh, that's part of it. You get a lot of guys on consoles, they play on a subpar monitor. They're at 60 Hertz or something. You're seeing things milliseconds ahead of them. Well, the beauty, like I said, of this system as a console killer is it works as well on the desk as it might on a display in the entertainment setup with the controller attached. It could do both. All right, all the peripherals and attachments, power cable, HDMI cable is included. Look at this, USB cable is included. Look at this, display port cable is included. Little power brick, this is gonna be your stand. This has a kind of stealth fighter aesthetic going on. Check it out. Ooh, look at the shape. Triangles, what is this shape? When you have a flat top like that. Stealth Fighter-esque, that's what you want. It's gaming, listen. It's not aggressive, I don't want it. Oh, it has a very slim bezel as well on three sides. Uh, this is a very rare feature on a monitor. This has a built-in KVM, and I, I use KVMs back in the old days when I was managing multiple systems on one monitor. That's built right into this monitor. So if you have it connected to your console killer over here, but you also maybe need to get some work done on a work laptop or something like this. You plug that in and then click one switch and move your entire desktop and your peripherals over to that secondary system. Look at this setup, yes. You can get this and you stick it on a desk and it looks clean and small and you still got the RTX 3070. You can still play the games now. If you had a desk, next to a couch or chair and TV, you could run multiple outputs on this and extend the desktop. You could sit at the monitor for the first person shooter style game. One enemy oh. remaining. Oh. Oh. One enemy oh. remaining. Oh. 30 seconds left. Oh. One enemy oh. remaining. Oh. Weren't we gonna leave everything? Uh, my my ultimate is ready. you, it's only a matter of time. The squad with the victory. Did I have any kills? Shout out to Bruck Dirk. Bruck Dirk. Couldn't have done it without you. You know, that's fun. I could get into that. All right, so we knew that this thing could do the desktop mode. That's obvious, it's a gaming PC, right? That's the way it goes. But the more curious part for me is how it behaves as a console substitute 
if you did want to push it out to a big display if you did want to kick back with a controller. So next thing to do here is to boot up Forza and take a seat over there. 136 frames and in a racing game like this, obviously I knew that with a configuration like this, you could beat a console. You're spending a little bit more money. I mean, that you gotta say that obviously, uh, but you get a lot more versatility and custom configurability. So that thing right there, it's still a PC. You can still use it to do everything that a PC does beyond game. And you could figure out a way to keep it on the desk and then run a secondary cable to a TV like this one with a couch in front of it, depending on what your setup looks like. So really it's a, it's a thing about versatility. And when you compare it on that metric, I think the benefits are pretty obvious. The cool part here is it's not just game consoles that have gotten better and shrunk down, but gaming PCs have done the same thing at the same time. And so it's worth a little refresh to see how much gaming capability you can get out of something that kind of fits the console profile, like this particular rig right here. <laughs> Victory.